We're driving a Ram 1500. Coming up, we're gonna share one of the ways that the Ram 1500 is one of the best full-size trucks you can buy, and also the worst. But first, information explosion. generation Ram 1500 was introduced in 2019. The one we're driving is a 2022 model because that's what was in the press fleet, but it's essentially identical to the 2023 model. There are a few light changes for 2023, mostly trim stuff. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but let's begin with interior. There is a super specific vibe in here that I've been trying to describe all day. Is it achy, breaky, chic? <laughs> That is very good. I was going to say leather pants on the weekend. <laughs> I bet there's a lot in the Venn diagram of achy, breaky, chic and leather pants on the weekend. 100%. It's a circle. <laughs> there is so much embroidery in here. It's on my door, it's on her door, it's on my seat, it's on the back of my seat, it's on her seat again. There is this trim. Bust out the graphic. <laughs> I poured over the uh, window sticker, the press side and the consumer side, and nowhere in uh, any of those materials do they say that that is wood. And if it was, I'm sure they would say it because they do say that this is wood. So I don't think that's wood. It <laughs> looks and feels like wood. Ram, if that's wood, be sure to note that on your website. <laughs> More interesting to me is the functionality. There are a lot of places you could put a pack of cigarettes in this car. Do you have a secret smoking habit? <laughs> Ram's got you covered. Dual glove boxes right there. Plenty of door storage. I really like the little uh, um, beer koozie drink holders. <laughs> yeah, what and is that? Under the floor back here, there are um, secret spots underneath the floor mat. Oh my gosh, on the center console here, top storage, deeper storage here. This entire center section slides four and a half cup holders. It's a supplemental look here for like coins and stuff. Dash top storage here with an adjacent power outlet um, so you can get your radar detector installed. We're driving the crew cab, which is the larger of the two cab options. And you can flip up the rear seats. There's a small amount of under seat storage back there, which is optional. What I really do like though, is that there's a flat floor back there with tie down points. You could put like a large screen TV back there inside secure storage rather than just having to throw everything the bed is super cool. And I love that the seats are a 60-40 split so you could take advantage of some of that storage and also have a kiddo back there. Seated behind my ideal front seat position, rear seat legroom and headroom are impeccable. Also in the middle position, a ton of space. The foot to butt ratio is favorable because there's no big center tunnel. Your foot and your butt are so happy. Yeah, I found my butt doesn't like being near other feet, uh, mine or otherwise. No judgment. <laughs> I'm also going to mention that the front seats come in a standard bench configuration. So your Ram can seat up to six people. All right, let's talk about the bed. This particular Ram has the uh, multifunction tailgate, which gives you really easy access to the bed because you don't have to like lean over a tailgate. This one also has the spray in bed liner and uh, four adjustable tie down points. There are also four static tie down points. Um, this has some LED lighting back there. We also have the tri-fold uh, tonneau cover. My one complaint is that there's an optional step that should be able to fold out. Either I'm too stupid to use it or it doesn't work correctly. I could not figure out how to lower it. But assuming that step worked great, it would be pretty easy to get into the uh, the bed. What about latch points? Any issues getting the car seat in here? These latch points were particularly easy to access. There's no cover, but it doesn't need one. I think there's enough pageantry to the rest of the interior. Even if it like had a little um, a sparkler attached to it, you wouldn't <laughs> notice the latch points. True. It's like there's too much embroidery in here. Kiddo, any issues getting in and out of this truck? Nope, it may be high, but I like the step because it's easier to get in and out. What do you think it'd be like getting in and out without the step? I bet it would be like, uh, Daddy, I need help. <laughs> and then I'd be like, uh, I don't want to have to be a parent. <laughs> particularly like the timing of this step. It opens very quickly as you open the door and then it holds as you close it just in case you change your mind. Another thing making it easy to get in and out of this particular Ram 1500 is that it has the optional air suspension, which is like 18, 1900 bucks. That has an easy access lowered height. Also gives you a little extra height if you want to go off-roading. In the beginning of the video, I teased that there is a way in which the Ram 1500 is simultaneously one of the best 
pickup trucks you can buy, and one of the worst, and that is safety. So from a crash perspective, it does very well. Five star overall from the NHTSA. It is an IIHS top safety pick. Also, automatic emergency braking. If you go to almost any other full-size pickup truck, I'm not sure if I can think of one that doesn't have it, it's standard equipment. It is not standard here. In fact, it's not even available on the lower trims. And then lane keeping assist. Many of the competitors include that standard. And uh, this one, on almost every trim, you have to buy an extra safety package in order to get lane keeping assist. I will remind you yet again, automatic emergency braking and lane keeping assist are standard on a Honda Civic or Toyota Corolla. It's crazy that they're um, added cost features on a vehicle this expensive. Countering that with just a bit of praise, I think the lane key keeping assist system works really well. There's a very gentle nudge pulling you back in. Also, I like that the dynamic cruise control system, as soon as a vehicle gets out of your way, it immediately starts accelerating again. Sometimes uh, similar systems are a little bit slow to react. With all that on the table, what do we think, family? Is the Ram 1500 family friendly? Family friendly. Yay. Yes, it is family friendly, but man, I wish safety was a little bit more widely available. Rear window test. Hi. <laughs> Hello. No, the other rear window. All the way down. All the way down. Boop. Armrest test. Okay, if I'm driving in a comfortable eight and four driving position, it is very comfortable. The uh, armrests, uh, both inboard and outboard, are really well positioned. Uh, they're even height. They're very soft. Uh, squishy, but not too squishy. I'm gonna go 95% inboard, 95% outboard. You gotta leave a little extra room to somehow be more dazzled by another armrest. <laughs> hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family? If you would, feel free to subscribe. Style! It looks super brawny. Some of the other trucks in the segment are a little bit newer and they're making maybe bigger swings in terms of style. Mm -hmm. uh, Tundra comes to mind, uh, Silverado comes to mind. This is sort of a more traditional look and I think there's a market for that. The thing about a pickup truck is that there are so many different trims available and uh, among Ram, each different trim has its own aesthetic. So really, you can find the trim that speaks to you. We, by the way, are driving the limited night edition, which adds 22 inch wheels. Uh, it's got black headlight bezels. It's got the sport hood. If you were wondering why it felt so sporty in here, that would be why. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you like the look of the Ram 1500? If so, if no, Tell us in the comment section, in motion. It's got coil springs in the back and it rides really well. I would describe it as pillowy, but not uncontrolled. And at speed, very quiet. The other thing that jumped out to me on the freeway was that um, the steering is very, very stable. There's not a ton of a, a steering uh, adjustments that you're making. And yet, in our windy mountain roads, it feels reasonably responsive when the road curves, but stable when you're on the freeway. An area that I have frequently scrutinized pickup trucks for, especially in the full-size category, are the brakes. There's great synchronicity in here between how much the pedal moves and how much the vehicle decelerates, uh, which makes it very easy to gauge how hard you need to push. And now, because I'm the cool dad, I'm gonna full throttle accelerate. Whee! Whee! Feels strong, right? Sounds good too. It does sound good. We've got the V8 under the hood and I really like it. Um, it's got an e-torque system, which is a mild 48 volt hybrid setup, which makes the engine stop start system almost transparent. I would have no need to turn it off though. If you want to, there's a button right down here. The eight speed automatic transmission, I think does a really good job. I floored it there. A little bit of a one-two punch, but I got the acceleration I wanted quite promptly. And when you're just cruising around, it's very hard to tell that it's shifting other than from sound. Okay, I'm gonna show you one last thing on here. Uh, you see what that says? Gear oh, yeah. limit. When it says gear limit, it means it. I'm in second here. Wow. I'm floored. We're at uh, almost 6,000 RPM. It will not upshift. And I think that is wonderful. Let's say you're towing. Another transmission might be inclined to like, oh, I'm going to upshift. And it's like, it doesn't know what you see. Like, mm -hmm. maybe you want to stay in that gear because you're about to hit a part where you have to go up a steeper hill or something like that. I have decided that second is my gear limit. I'm just going to hang out here at Redline. It doesn't sound good anymore. It no, sounds like no, it's no, no, it's cool. If it wasn't cool, they wouldn't have given me this gear limit <laughs> selector. All right, that's what I think. What does sweetie think? 
Sweetie's at the wheel, vehicle. I hate this. <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> I hate driving a large vehicle because it just feels like a lot to wheel. <laughs> but tell me, how is your driving position? The adjustable pedals are helping a lot because I don't have to be so far toward the steering wheel and I can actually see over my left shoulder because of that, which is very rare. Yeah, what about over the right shoulder? There's a huge window there. If I have any visibility concern, it would be the high hood line? Yes, I don't care for the huge lump in my field of vision, but... You do have adjustability so you could raise your seat up a little bit if and you want it. Ooh, I if and do. <laughs> Oftentimes people think of big trucks as being like heavy. The steering makes this feel very easy to drive. It's very light. So overall, despite its size, are you feeling relatively comfortable in the Ram 1500? I am. She is. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Yeah, I still have it uh, pegged at Redline. That's how I roll. Overall, I think it is a very, very pleasant vehicle to drive. Moving on to Emotion Factor. Diverting very briefly from Ram stuff, I'm gonna thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. They're made out of a material called Rosilamide, which lets them be very flexible, even though my hand is not, because it's been broken for a while. Uh, <laughs> but it's very lightweight, very durable, excellent in the uh, helicopter environment where you need the temples to fit underneath a headset because uh, noise cancellation doesn't work if you've got a lot of noise bleed. If you'd appreciate aviation grade eyewear, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code MICA to save 10% on flying eyes. There are two emotional triggers being pulled for me here. One is style. Embroidery, I mean style. <laughs> <laughs> and also practicality, which those don't always go together. It will get the job done, but also it can be a gateway to adventure. It's really up to you to decide how you want to use the capabilities and the customizability of a, a pickup truck really makes it feel like it's yours. What do you guys think? Is there an emotion factor to the Ram 1500? If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Ram 1500 of your very own, you might need to sell your current car first. If you'd like to know what your current car is worth or what you should pay for a Ram 1500, there's a Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. Click it. Or what? <laughs> yes, we've reached the demanding part of the video. Enjoy your beverage now. Call your mother. She misses you. Moving onward to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. The base infotainment screen is five inches. It doesn't have smartphone integration, so I would probably skip that. But if you move up to anything above like the base level trims, you can get a 8.4 inch screen or this 12 inch unit here. That's Uconnect 5. They both include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity. At first I was thrown off because there was no dedicated camera button. And then I noticed that you could just push home, add it to your shortcuts or swipe down and add it here. I think the whole interface works quite well. I do have two complaints though. Complaint number one, it's surrounded by shiny black plastic uh, in a heavy touch zone, so you're gonna get a lot of smudges. Complaint number two is that the 360 degree camera system, while quite functional, doesn't make use of the uh, big, big screen we've got here. I'm not sure if that was a design decision or if that was dictated by the resolution of the cameras, that they didn't mm. want to blow up the image so much that it looked grainy. Whatever it is, I wish they made better use of the screen. And now, a brand new segment on uh, our family videos, the Musio family smell test. Some people um, don't like new car smell. There's one member of our family who's very, very good at detecting that kind of stuff. Kiddo, uh, do you like new car smell? Yeah. So you're the perfect person to ask, how does it smell in here? Is it good, is it bad, or do you just not care? Bad. It's bad? Oh, oh, oh okay. And that's the Museo family smell test. <laughs> All right, we should talk about engine choices. The basic engine is a 3.6 liter V6, and then there's the 5.7 liter V8 that we're driving. Then there's a three liter V6 diesel, and then a 6.2 liter V8 that's supercharged, but that is only in the TRX. Max tow comes with the 5.7 liter V8, and the V6 diesel tows almost the same. Sweetie? Can I give you a trim recommendation? Yeah. By the way, our trim recommendation is which trim will give you the features you would regret not buying, but at the lowest possible price. Do you know how you've heard me say I will not live without smart key access? Well, 
In the case of the Ram 1500, you can't get that technology on anything lower than the Laramie trim. That's more than $50,000 worth of Ram. By the way, if you're trying to figure out if a trim has it or not, the way they call it in Ram speak is front door, passive entry, and lock. So my trim recommendation is going to be the $52,575 Laramie trim. It comes standard with the crew cab, power folding mirrors, a power sliding rear window, power, heated, ventilated, memory, leather trimmed front seats, an 8.4 inch infotainment screen, dual zone climate control, power adjustable pedals, and automatic emergency braking. For customizing your Ram 1500, you can choose from two cab sizes and two bed lengths, both six foot four and five foot seven. We're driving a 2022 model, but for 2023, there are no major changes, but there are a plethora of trim updates. Also a slight bump in prices, the addition of a standard rear seat reminder alert, and a glove box on the Ram red trim that that kills bacteria in three minutes with UV light. Come on in bacteria, we're just gonna hang in the glove compartment. It's cool. Wink. <laughs> As for the competitors, there's the Ford F-150, which you can get as a hybrid or as an EV and in Raptor form. There's the Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra twins, and uh, GM offers that really cool multi-flex tailgate. And then the Toyota Tundra, which you can get with a pretty cool hybrid system. And if you'd like to see our review of the Toyota Tundra, click right up here. Boy, it got really dark here. Lastly, I'm gonna mention that um, another alternative to the Ram 1500 is the Ram 1500 classic. They still sell the fourth generation Ram pickup truck as a new vehicle. It starts a little bit above $30,000, even though it's got a much lower acquisition costs. Resale values on a fourth generation truck when they have been selling the fifth generation truck for like five years uh, are not going to be great. So uh, go into that with open eyes. Lastly, Ram has a full electric version of the Ram 1500 coming in 2024, and they're going to offer a gasoline range extender, which could make it a very formidable towing unit. Uh, it sounded awkward, but you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! If thinking about the essence of the Ram 1500, it's an enjoyable ride, but to get the experience you'd actually want, it's gonna cost you. To me, it is the window seat and a helicopter tour of full-size pickup trucks. In this scenario, I'm assuming a middle seat might be cheaper. <laughs> Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Ram 1500. May I have a gentle five? And a gentle five? Gentle. And yes, I still have a broken hand. You, come get your high five. Ah!